Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today I'm bringing you a really quick video on just some basic art prep for laser engravers. So if you're wondering how to get artwork ready for the laser, but we're gonna talk all about that, a lot of vector stuff, a little bit of bitmap stuff, uh, but we're gonna do a lot of that in other videos, so we're not gonna go too in depth on the bitmap. Uh, so mostly vector stuff. We're gonna be working in AI today, uh, but most of this applies to Inkscape as well. I prefer Illustrator anyway, so we're gonna jump right in and take a look at some of that. So hang out if you wanna learn how to do Illustrator because we are going to start right now. Hey guys, what's up? So uh, we are over here at the computer and we've got some stuff to cover today. We're gonna cover text, uh, graphics, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but the best way to start is to just go ahead and jump right into it. It's not gonna be the most exciting video today, but hopefully it will be useful. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just open Illustrator here and we'll create a new document. Uh, whenever I create a new document, I like to start at five by three just because it kind of mirrors my 4x4 workspace on the fiber, but not really. I've just, I've grown comfortable with 5x3. I know the scale for the fiber and the CO2 on like whereabouts that's gonna be, so I know how things should look. And I've just been using it for a really long time. So we're gonna use that today uh, and we'll go ahead and create it. And here we are, um, once that's set up, uh, we can go ahead and create some text. So that's just gonna be this T, the type tool over here and we can click that and drop in some text and uh, we could do a name like, um, you know, Nathan Drake, right? Uh, that'll do. And we could pick a font like Callisto. It's one of my all time favorite fonts. Uh, I use it for everything and that looks really good. So that's how you get basic text. Um, but the first thing that I wanna point out is that when you have this line under the text, it means that this is still in text format. Uh, and the lasers aren't gonna be able to see this if we import this into the laser. Uh, so the first thing that you always do with text is we wanna do object and expand. Expanding the text from a font file vector to a shape allows the fiber and the CO2 laser to see that shape because uh, it's looking for shapes and not a particular font reference. Uh, so you always want to expand all your text before you send it to the laser. Uh, so there we go. We've got some expanded text. So this is great if we're just doing basic nameplates and stuff. But what if we want to do something more? Um, the next neat little tool that I'm going to show you is called the uh, envelope distort. Um, so if we go ahead and select our text here and we go to object and then we come down to envelope distort, we want to make with warp. And when we click that, we get this little menu over here and a bunch of different options. So um, we can bend the text into like an arc. So if you wanted to bend the text onto like a banner or something, um, this would be a great tool for that. There are also some additional distortion effects here uh, that you can play around with to get different effects. Uh, so if you want to do that, you can definitely check that out. This kind of like drops it back into space. Um, but we're going to just leave this at zero and zero for now. Um, some of the other styles that we can choose from are like the arc. Uh, we can bridge it if we wanna do something like that. Uh, we can also do the arch, which kind of fans it out a little more than like the regular arc, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, the flag is a nice effect. So that gives us kind of like a wave there. And if we, we can go ahead and give it a little bit more of a bend uh, and that looks pretty great too. Um, so that's another thing that we can do. Uh, and then there's a few more in here and you can play around with those to uh, get a look uh, that you want. But for now, we'll just go with the arc uh, and we'll tone that back just a little bit. Um, might even go the opposite direction. That looks great. So we'll hit OK. The next thing I want to point out is that we now have this warp framework here. And the warp framework, again, is going to confuse our laser. So we want to make sure we do object, expand again and hit OK so that we get back into shape form. Uh, that's where we wanna be on this. So that's not actually all we can do with text. Another cool thing that we can do is uh, type on a path, and I'll show you that next. So if we grab our ellipse tool here, um, we draw a nice circle, I'm just hitting shift here to uh, make sure that that stays nice and even. Uh, we don't want like some weird ellipse in this case, though you could, and you could still use this 
method to get a nice arc. Um, we want a nice uh, perfect circle there. And we will uh, go ahead and get rid of the fill on this and just leave it with a little bit of a stroke so that we have something that we can visually see and work with. And we're gonna grab our text tool, but instead of doing the regular type tool, we're gonna right click this. We're gonna come down to type on a path uh, and that's gonna let us type something out. So we can go ahead and type, you know, um, like the U of R Honorary Society. That looks great. Um, now what you'll notice is if I wanted to move this to center it, the little grabber is all the way over here and we're just kind of eyeballing it um, to center and that's that's not what we want. So um, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna double click this and control A to select all of that text. And we're gonna click the align center button as if we were typing on a regular paragraph. That looks like it's off, but what that does for us is it gives us the handle right in the center of the text. So now we can grab that and we can align it right up here to the, um, and this, this can be a little finicky. Uh, we're gonna align it right up here to the center post. Sometimes you gotta mess with it. If it ever starts to get super, just like, ah, it's not working, um, let go, control Z to undo and just try it again. Um, typically, I find that moving slower tends to give better results. And you can see it snaps right there to that center node. Um, and I've messed it up now because uh, I took too long to let go. But um, if we just control Z one more time, nice and slow, and we'll get a nice snap right on that center node and we can let it go. And now we know that this is perfectly center, uh, right where we want it to be. Uh, you can change the text at this point. It's still gonna stay center, which is really nice. So we can add a couple spaces right there. Uh, and that looks really good. Um, if we want, we can actually do text running the opposite way on the circle as well. So if we wanted something in the bottom here, uh, all we have to do is hold Alt and drag and drop that uh, extra text right there. So now we've got a second circle of the same size um, and we can type in something like, uh, you know, Student Award uh, 2021, okay? and. Uh, we're just gonna grab our little handle and we're gonna do two things. We're gonna bring it to the bottom and we're gonna shift it to the inside of the circle. So watch here, uh, we'll come around and bring it to the bottom and we're gonna just shift it to the inside of the circle. Uh, so now we've got a nice arc here. Uh, so both can be read right side up, which is really cool, but you'll see these don't really make a nice circle. And that's because um, the text is writing on the outer edge here and it's writing on the inner edge here. So what we want to do is we want this circle to be big enough that the text uh, above it fits on that kind of ring there. So we a little large, we can take this down just a little bit. And uh, this looks really nice. So now you can see our inner circle uh, is lining up with the top of our outer circle uh, on the text there and the inner circle for the top text is writing along the top edge of the uh, bottom text there. So that gives us kind of like a nice ring if you can see that, uh, that's what you want. And then lastly, we can just control A and select this text and resize it again because we did blow up that circle which changed our text size uh, to get those about even. And that's looking really nice. Um, finally, we can grab our circle tool here or you could grab a vector or whatever you want. We'll just draw a little circle uh, as a spacer there and we can click it, hold Alt, and click and drag away. Um, when you're holding Alt and dragging, you can drag this wherever you want, but if you hold Shift, it'll force it to stay in line with the one that um, you're sourcing this from. Uh, so we can drag that over and let it go. And if we group these, uh, we'll just hold Shift and select these again to deselect them. We can group it and then select everything and center it up with our line tool up here at the top. And now we've got a really nice kind of like seal graphic uh, that we've created there. And that, that looks really good. So uh, the last thing we wanna do, just like we did with the, uh, the name title up here, uh, this text is still in like font format. So we want to expand that to shapes. Um, expanding the circles again won't hurt anything. So we'll just go ahead and select everything and we will do object, expand, and there we go. This is all a nice shape now that's looking really, really good. 
Um, so that's how you use the type on a path tool. And we'll just go ahead and control G to group this and we can set that aside. There is one last text tool that I'd like to show you uh, and that's going to require one more ellipse. So we'll go ahead and uh, create an ellipse here. And if we grab our uh, text tool, we can go ahead and use the area type tool. Um, before we do that, we're just gonna, one more time, we're gonna remove that fill and just add a little bit of a stroke so we can see what we're doing. Um, so this looks really great right here. And uh, now we can go ahead and right click here and make sure we have our area type tool selected. So once we have that clicked, we can just go ahead and type some text. Um, any text will do. So you can see we went ahead and typed our text and it fits nicely inside of our circle. This will work with any shape. Um, of course, your text size is going to change how well things are gonna fit. Um, if we selected all of this and made it really small, we're gonna get a better fit to these edges. Um, we can actually just for demonstration purposes, we'll copy this uh, and we can just paste it a bunch of times and you'll see now uh, it's filling that circle in a much nicer way. Um, and then you can, of course, go to object and expand once again. And uh, we're left with a nice circular pattern for text. Um, you can use this with justify and it'll spread the letters out a little better to give you even more of a circle shape. And there are some more advanced features that we can talk about in another video about really fitting it to that form. Um, but that's out of the scope of today's video. Uh, for today, we'll just go ahead and call that good. Um, so there is our circle text project and that looks great. Um, and then one final thing that I wanna do with the text today before um, we move on is uh, I wanna show you how to do negatives. So um, again, we're coming over here. We're just gonna grab our, uh, our circle here and we can take our text, hold alt and drag a copy. And now if I uh, change the text to white because we wanna be able to see it and hold shift and click the circle, we can use our alignment tools to align that. So right now the circle is blocking our white text and we want our text in the front. So there's a couple ways that um, you can force that to change layers. One is holding control and then the brackets next to the letter P on the keyboard. So if I just hit my, uh, the left bracket a few times, uh, that'll push the circle into the back so that this uh, pops up in the front. The other way that we can do this is we can just click the circle, right click it and do arrange, send to back and that'll send it to the very bottom layer, uh, which also works. Um, now, let's say we want this whole circle to engrave, but not the, the text to make us sort of a stamp. Um, what we're gonna use is a new tool. We haven't talked about it yet. It's right over here, it's called Pathfinder. If this isn't here on your copy of Illustrator, you can also go to Window and then Pathfinder, and that will pull up the Pathfinder window, which you can then drag over here and dock. Uh, but mine's right here, so we'll click that. And what we're looking for is the trim tool. It should be under Pathfinders. And uh, let's see, Merge Trim. There it is. So if I click this with both the circle and the text selected, it's going to trim away whatever's on top. Uh, so we can ungroup this now and select any of our white pieces. So, um, you know, this circle, for example, do Select, Same, and Fill Color and then we can delete all that white. And now if I grab this and we just bring it down here off the artboard so you can see, um, we have gotten rid of all of that text and it's effectively punched a hole through our circle. So now when we go to engrave this, it's gonna engrave everything except the text uh, and the text will be rising up out of the circle. So that's kind of a neat effect too. Just another uh, little trick for you guys um, when you're prepping your laser artwork. So that's about all we're going to cover on text today. And we're gonna go ahead and move over to shapes. So um, everybody can understand how to make a basic shape, right? We can build a rectangle um, and that's easy enough. Uh, but what if we have like an L shape that we're trying to do? Um, we could take another rectangle. Again, that's just Alt, click and drag uh, right there, just like that. And um, we can go ahead and turn it and we'll rotate it. So what if we needed a shape like this, right? Now, this is all well and good, except uh, this is two separate shapes and we don't want overlap. Uh, there's two ways that we can bring these together to make one shape. 
Uh, the first way is with Unite. So we'll select everything. We'll come back down here to our Pathfinder tools. So you're going to use these a lot in Laser. Uh, and we're going to look for this Unite button right here. So if we click Unite, then uh, it flattens everything into one shape and uh, that works perfectly. Um, a more complex example would be if we had multiple shapes. Um, so we can just make another copy of this and maybe give it a rotation just to make it a little more complicated. Uh, we can grab one more ellipse and we'll drop it right in there. And so now we've got these three shapes. Now, what if we want this right here in the middle? Um, there's no easy way to grab this uh, with our Unite and Merge tools. So what we can do is come over here and grab our Shape Builder tool. And the Shape Builder is a great tool. It's going to take whatever sections of these vectors that we want uh, when we click them and drag through them and combine them into a shape and separate everything else out. And I'll demonstrate that for you right now. We'll just go ahead and click and we drag through these different shapes and let go. And it's going to combine them into one shape. So now we can grab our selection tool and get rid of all these extra pieces right here. And get rid of all of them and we're left with that nice clean shape. Now, you aren't ever going to really need a shape like this, but you can use this to create a bunch of different really cool shapes. Um, and you know, a, a great example of it is the moon. I love to do the uh, classic moon. Hold on, sorry, hit F and I went to full screen there. So uh, the classic moon is really easy. It's just two ellipses. So one, and then we can go ahead and make a perfect copy, two. And if we select both of these, uh, we want just this moon shape right here. We don't want any of this junk. So we'll grab the shape builder tool and just click the moon. And then we can combine these two if we want to. And we're left with a nice circle and our moon. So um, that's a really good use of the shape builder tool. And you can use it to create all different kinds of shapes like this. So uh, definitely something you wanna practice and, and learn to use. Um, the final way that I would use this is maybe if um, we wanted to do like a plaque, we could grab our rectangle tool. So there's a little pretend plaque, right? Um, and we, let's just say, want some um, like mounting holes cut out of this. So we can go ahead and create our hole. We'll fill it with white. Um, just so you know, I'm holding shift here to get this menu. It's not popping up on the screen, but if you just click it down, you get a normal palette. But if you hold shift and click it, you get the full color board with your RGB values, and that's really convenient. Um, so let's come down here and we'll grab our little mounting hole and move it right up into the corner where we would typically want something like that. We'll hold Alt and make a copy. And again, I'm using Shift to keep it on the same axis right there. Okay, uh, so right there looks good. And then we can select both of these and Alt one more time down to the bottom and again I'm holding shift to make sure this stays where it needs to be and that looks good and then what we can do is um, we can select all four of these just like that and we'll group them and select our plaque and we can align uh, vertically and horizontally and now we've got that nice and center so that's looking really good um, We'll punch those out with the Shape Builder tool in a second, but I did also just want to show you the corners. Here can be dragged in, so you can give it some rounded corners if you'd like, or we can come up here to Shape. Uh, we can also experiment with some of these other ones, like a chamfer. Um, we'll zoom in just a little bit for you there, so you can see. So there's the chamfer edge, right? Um, and then one of my personal favorites would be like the notched corner right there. Um, I really like the notched, so we'll just go ahead and do it, just because we're we're going full plaque mode here. Uh, so we've got our notched corners there now, and uh, we want to get rid of these. We want to get rid of these little holes. So we could select the whole thing and do Pathfinder and Trim, uh, but we can also come in here if we wanted to. Let's just make sure this is all selected, or we could come over here and grab our Shape Builder tool and just build little shapes out of these four mounting holes, just like this. And now all four of those mounting holes will be treated as separate shapes. So if we move our plaque, uh, we can now see that when we get rid of these, we've got our nice four mounting holes uh, actually cut into the shape there. And that's great. So we've got a little plaque, uh, that's kind of cool. 
once our shape is built, we can come in here and uh, select our plaque and just get rid of this fill. And uh, just like everything, go ahead and add a stroke. And uh, that looks really good right there. So um, there's our little plaque. We made it and uh, now we can cut or engrave this into something as we see fit or use it as an outline or whatever, whatever else we want to do uh, with it there. And uh, we'll come back to this. We'll make kind of a final project out of it in a second. Um, just so you know, these X9, it's because I'm holding down space to get the hand. And then when you click and drag with the space, you can actually drag around the screen. I, I use it quite a bit. Um, so a little tip there. One other little tip that doesn't really fit into anything else we're doing here is um, reflecting. So if I hold Alt and we create a copy here, um, we can click this shape and do select, um, or excuse me, rather object, transform and reflect. And we can reflect this on whichever um, axes we want. Uh, so if we do a vertical reflect there, now we have kind of like this cool shape where they're, they're overlapping and you could do something like uh, that right there. And again, if we wanted to unite these into one shape, we can do unite. Um, so just the, the little reflection tool there can be uh, pretty handy for making some cool uh, shapes and graphics. Uh, so I wanted to throw a reflect in really quick before we move on to our next topic which is image trace. Um, so I did go ahead before we got started and I downloaded a couple images from the University of Rochester, uh, which is a, a local school here by me. And um, we can drag these in now and just trace them in Illustrator, but they really should be prepared. Um, and I'll show you what this looks like. So if I just drag in this random picture of uh, Rocky here, um, which is the U of our mascot, and we click image trace, you're gonna see it's, it's really rough on that R. Um, we're not getting the, uh, the, the detail in this that there should be. You can see there's an outline around the R, the antenna are all messed up, uh, the stinger doesn't look particularly good. We can actually fix this. We don't have to accept this. Um, and in order to do that, we're actually gonna stop in Illustrator for a minute and open up Photoshop. Uh, so we'll pull Photoshop up here. We're gonna go ahead and bring Rocky into Photoshop and we'll do image, uh, image size first. We want to resize this, okay? Um, we'll do resolution. Uh, image trace in Illustrator works best at right around 600 dBi. So we're gonna go ahead and set that to 600. Um, I also prefer to have my minimum value on one of these set to 5,000, uh, at least 5,000. Sometimes by setting the resolution to 600, you'll get a value of 5,000 or more uh, pixels, but we're not getting that here. So we're actually gonna go ahead and blow it up just a little bit bigger and uh, we'll hit okay. And that's gonna make this really, really big. Um, it doesn't look super good right now, uh, but we can fix that too. So we'll go to image adjustments and we're just gonna threshold this and that'll give us a nice black and white image uh, and we can adjust the slider here to get just the, the right threshold uh, so that looks pretty good right there and then there's one thing I do want to clean up and that's this like it's bleeding out on the R here uh, so we'll go ahead and just grab our eraser tool and we can just clean that up really quick doesn't need to be a big deal we got another one down here and one final one right there um, so we can just clean up those edges. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, and the last thing is when the edges of a graphic are touching the edge of the frame, it can cause some weird things to happen in the trace. So I'm just gonna lastly grab our crop tool here uh, and we're gonna just expand this out a little bit just so it's not touching on the edges. Um, now this is gonna provide a much better result for us in Illustrator and I'll show you that now. So we'll save this over the old one. Uh, which is file save and we'll hit okay and we can minimize illustrator and grab our new rocky and bring him in and uh, actually it went ahead and retraced our our old one here as you can see it just kind of cleaned that up immediately which is not exactly what i wanted to happen because i wanted to compare for you um but uh, there it is so we'll hit expand and now you can see because we uh, went ahead and resized that, we've got much more definition out of the R. 
uh, much more definition out of the stinger here. The antenna look better. Um, but we do not want to send this over to our laser software as is. And the reason for that is because EasyCAD and Lightburn are going to see this. They're going to see this white. It sees this white and sees a shape here. And when you select it, it's going to try to hatch that. Um, we definitely don't want that hatched. We just want the black. Uh, so like we've done uh, up top a couple of times, we're just going to select one piece of the white. doesn't matter. Any piece. We're going to do select same fill color and that's going to select all the white in our image and then we just hit the delete key and it all goes away uh, so that looks really great and we can select all of this now and hit Control g to group and uh there you go we've got a nice little uh, uh rocky there who's ready to uh win some sports games okay so there's rocky um the same thing works on logos uh even colored logos um we have the u of r kind of logo and seal here and we're going to just run through the process one more time a little tighter with a little less explanation so you can see how the workflow is supposed to work so we will pull up photoshop we're going to drag this into a new tab and we're going to do our image image size we're going to set our resolution to 600 dpi we're going to set any minimum value to 5000 pixels uh, and we're going to hit OK, and it's going to go ahead and blow this up for us nice and big. And then another thing that we want to do here is since this is transparent, again, Image Trace does not really like transparency, so we're just going to layer and flatten that so that we've got a nice white background and good clean edges on these graphics. And then we can do Image Adjustments Threshold to get that nice black and white. We can even control plus here uh, and just zoom in and take a look at this to make sure this all looks good. I don't think we need any adjustment here too much and it'll start to blow things out. Um, so it should be good right there, right in the middle. And uh, this should all trace really nicely at this point. So we can go ahead and save it. So file save. Um, you get the best traces out of PNGs and JPEGs. So one of those is fine. Um, we can now close these. We're done in Photoshop and we can minimize it. And we'll bring our U of R logo over to our uh, our Illustrator document here. Let me just go ahead and let's, let's max this back out because we are done grabbing things off the uh, desktop. Uh, so lastly, we're just going to Image Trace. Hit OK. It's going to take a second because it's a larger graphic than the one we just did. And there it is. That's a beautiful trace. It looks great. You would never know it wasn't original. We can expand this now. Ungroup. Select any part of the white, select, same, fill color, hit delete so that we can get rid of all that white. And there we go. Uh, a beautiful University of Rochester uh, logo and seal ready to go. We'll group it with control G uh, and that looks great. So we've got all the basic building blocks we need now for a major project. Um, we could go ahead and put our U of R logo right on our plaque. It's looking really good and uh, we can grab our little circle text that we made with the type on a path and drop that in there we can grab rocky maybe and drop him in the center of that and uh our our name we gotta have a name on our plaque right so we can drop that in there um obviously this is this is a little ugly <laughs> I, I i wouldn't have made a lot of these choices um maybe not the uh not the the curve on this you know i might have used a couple different fonts um but the the point is it it works um so one thing that we can do here is we just want to make sure everything is nice and center um if we grab all of this and we just hit the align tool uh that's gonna just center things up for us there we can also go ahead and grab the b and align him to the center of our circle here uh, sometimes centering is weird because of capital letters, so he actually looks just a little bit tall. I will tap him down, just one tap, uh, and that looks good there. Um, there is one other thing that I wanted to show you. So if we want to center this to our circle, uh, if we just go ahead and select both of them and I hit center, it brings both of them together uh, from their positions. We don't want that. We already like where the circle is. so. What we're going to do is select both of them uh, and I'm holding shift there to make multiple selections. So click, shift, click, 
Okay, and that now we have both selected. Uh, and then I'm, without holding shift, I'm gonna click one more time on our circle and that makes our circle the active object. So now we can center and center. And we did all of that centering without moving the position of the circle because we knew the circle is where we wanted it to go. Um, so that's how you move things to other things without necessarily moving both of them, uh, which is just kind of an annoying trait about Illustrator. Um, with that done, we are ready to save our file. So uh, all we need to do here is maybe uh, come in and do file save as. And for our laser software, we really want to save as a version 8. So we can come up here to our desktop and we'll save this as Rocky. And I'll just call it V8 so I know it's a version 8. And we'll hit save because we do have Adobe Illustrator file selected here. You could save this as an EPS too, um, but I like version 8 Illustrator. Uh, none of the features included in any of these file formats have anything to do with laser, so you're not missing out by saving it as an older file type, and it ensures compatibility with your machine. So we'll just select Illustrator version 8, we'll hit OK, hit OK one more time, and it's going to save it, and now we can bring this file into uh, EasyCAD if we wanted to. It's going to come right there uh, at exactly the size we made it. All the scaling will be appropriate, so if we select this and check, uh, it will indeed come into EasyCAD at 3.4 by 4 inches um, perfectly. So uh, that's some basic artwork. I'm just looking here to make sure there isn't anything else that I want to chat about today. Um, there is the blob brush. Uh, one final note here. So just for the sake of example, let's say we wanted our um, R completely filled in. Um, we could actually come in here. So here's the brush tool. We're going to right click it and select the blob brush. Um, we've got a really big brush there. So I'm just going to turn that down with the bracket uh, next to the P. And what this does is it actually paints vectors in. So if I go ahead and paint this and we do a fill right here to fill our R in. Um, when I let go and grab the selection tool, you can see it's actually, there's no blob. It's just built it into the existing vector, which is great because we don't have to do any unites. Um, and it just, it just comes out super clean. Um, the blob brush is also smooth by the system. So if I come in here and kind of do a jagged line, it smooths that line out for me. Uh, not a lot, but enough to be able to do some nice graphics with the blob brush if you're patient and you go slow. Um, another thing that we can do with this, if we ungroup it, uh, just one other Pathfinder uh, little tip and tool here that I want to show you. Uh, if we have the whole R here and we group that, Control G, we come into Pathfinder and unite it. So if we do unite, it'll just, just to cover our bases, uh, set this up for the next step, which is merge. So here's the merge. And what merge does is it breaks down the barriers between these shapes. So if I click it, it doesn't look like much all happened, but those barriers between these shapes are gone now. And if we hit unite one more time, it fills that entire R. It can be a good way to fill a bunch of space within a certain shape if that's something that you want to do. Um, so there's that. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that about covers it for this session. Um, there's quite a bit more that I, I really want to talk about as far as preparing artwork, but I'm going to save it for another video. Uh, because it can get a little more in depth and I really wanted this to just stay like basic beginners tutorial on preparing artwork for lasers so uh, with that said we're all done this has run uh, quite long enough so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call it here but I will start preparing the next art tutorial for like the intermediate level stuff uh, right away so that we can get that out and you can pick up right where this video left off. Um, when that video is done, I'll go ahead and throw a card up so that you can just click over to the next tutorial and pick up right where we left off right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you learned a thing or two about editing graphics in Adobe Illustrator today. If you did, hit the like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe because we make videos like this all the time, teaching you all kinds of stuff about a ton of different lasers. If you really loved it, check out the Patreon. It's linked in the description below. Right now you can get access to all of our fiber laser and CO2 laser parameters, as well as a ton of other benefits, including Discord roles, uh, monthly live streams, and a whole lot 
lot more, so check that out. Uh, speaking of Discord, also check the Discord out. It's linked right next to the Patreon. And it's a huge community filled with amazing people who are really willing and uh, happy to help uh, teach you about your lasers and help you with settings and all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you want to check out a great laser community, check out the Discord. If you don't have Adobe Illustrator, there is a link to that in the description as well, so check that out if you'd like to get started. It's kind of expensive, but it really is the best software for laser engravers, so uh, it's definitely something you're going to want to check out. And uh, that's all I've got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And we're going to have another video out for you in just a couple days, so uh, stay tuned, and I will see you in the next one. Later! Thank you.